Today I welcome back two executives from Tufin, Ruvi Kitov, CEO, and Reuven Harrison, CTO. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. So what's the hot thing going on in firewall policy management, and how come we haven't fixed this problem yet? Because there seem to be more policies today than there were a year ago. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're doing new things. There's a lot of new things at Tufin. Um, we're actually, uh, one of the things that we did last year is um, transition into a new space for us and change the name of the space as well so it's no longer a firewall policy management. Uh, it's a security policy orchestration. Uh, we believe that what we do is, you know, transcends firewalls, actually, you know, it's routers and switches and load balancers and uh, not just firewalls. And it's a lot more than just policy management. It's actually um, automating the network change process and orchestrating different systems uh, through APIs. So um, it's, you know, it's much bigger um, than just policy management. And obviously it's you know, not just, uh, you know, a, a new marketing term. Um, there's a lot of work involved in that. So uh, we invested a lot in um, the ability to automate change processes going from, let's say, a week uh, to taking uh, th that a, normally a, a change takes to implement uh, down to a day uh, through automation and analytics. Um, so we're investing a lot in uh, both automation and understanding the network better. So uh, network topology analysis, being able to understand exactly uh, how to suggest changes to be implemented correctly, um, what exactly uh, needs to occur in order to implement that change quickly, um, analyzing the change impact, so change impact analysis, what will happen if you implement this change from a security perspective, from a business perspective. Um, so a lot of work uh, went into that and uh, we're still investing a lot in those areas and it's uh, proving to be very successful for us. So it sounds like we're getting close to the holy grail where, you know, uh, DevOps, you know, has a new project and they got to launch this new thing. And in, in the past, you know, they bring in the network security guys at the last minute and they'd like struggle and experiment and open up more than they had to. Are we getting to the point where they can kind of say, this is what I want to happen. And then you help them decide what and how to make it happen. Yeah, that's right. It's um, you could say that what we're doing is DevOps uh, meeting network security, mm -hmm. uh, which is starting to happen. Um, and as you said correctly, the you know the security is uh, an afterthought; mm -hmm. uh, it always has been. But the DevOps movement wants to bake security or you know bake the entire operations into the process at an earlier phase, so that the applications can be rolled out and the de delivery can be accelerated. And that's exactly what we're doing. So. There's traditionally two forces that um, conflict with each other, um, network security and business agility, and we're kind of allowing you to accelerate both at the same time through automation. So is security policy orchestration something that's a, a new product that your existing customers have to upgrade and reinstall, or is it just an evolution? Uh, not just, but... Sure, I think it's, uh, so it's a little bit of both. It's an evolution. Uh, we now have three products. So we have Secure Track, uh, which is, you know, firewall policy management, um, kind of the classic product that we started with, and and uh, it's you know selling very well and continuing to grow. We're investing in that as well, and uh, Secure Change, which does the change automation, uh, which really grew a lot last year, and uh, we invested a lot in the capability of Secure Change, and Secure App is growing well uh, as well, and that's a relatively new product which deals with application delivery management. So, um, you know, when we talk about security policy orchestration, we're talking about the whole suite, mm -hmm. and it's an approach to automating changes. Um, when customers come to us, a lot of times, if they're just starting out, you know, they need to crawl before they walk and walk before they run. So a lot of times they start with just getting a handle on what they're doing first. So controlling changes, cleaning up. Once they're stable, they can start automating changes and later on looking at it from the application perspective. So there is a phased approach, although um, you know some customers just go at it, you know, one fell swoop. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're ready for it. They're ready to make a change and integrate it into their change process, uh, while others take some time. So orchestration is is really a you know it describes a new way, a new paradigm for implementing changes automatically. Um, and you know, there's three products at Tufin today, and you know, later on we'll develop additional ones. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's about the, you know, the, the process, 
of implementing changes through automation and analytics. Tell me more how Secure App works. All right, Secure App actually, uh, what's nice is that uh, our stack of uh, products within the suite, uh, they each leverages the functionality of the other products. So Secure App actually uh, reuses old technology that we have in Secure Track and Secure Change. Uh, so first of all, uh, the network topology model that Ruby mentioned, which basically models the entire layer three connectivity, including um, stuff you know which is like firewall policies, but also NAT policies and routing and static routing, and dynamic routing, MPLS stuff like that. So we get a very good, um, accurate model of the network. And on top of that, what we're doing is we're modeling the business application. So there's like two layers, very similar to the OSI model, um, that relate to each other and depend on each other, um, but in most traditional organizations, there is no synchronization. So we're kind of creating the automatic synchronization uh, between these two layers. Now, Secure App is actually um, um, a collection of business applications. Uh, business application is a collection of assets, like servers and subnets and users, and the rules of connectivity between these um, assets. Um, an application could be like a high-end um, service that you provide to your customers, like think of iTunes, for example, mm -hmm. or it could be um, um, an infrastructure or a network service like um, DHCP or Exchange, for, for example, somewhere in the middle. Um, and then once you've defined your applications, by, these, by the way, these definitions are uh, always in, 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 uh, you know, uh, changing. They're very dynamic. Sure. But once you've defined an application, well, all you need to do is push it down to the operations and security team. So, put, so the dev guys can actually um, request a, a ticket, a change ticket, which will take their application connectivity definitions, translate it to uh, work uh, orders, and translate it to the language that network and security people can understand. Later on, we automate the process of uh, implementing these changes on the firewall. So that's the change automation. Another nice thing in Secure App is that um, we look at the entire network and we make sure that the applications are fully connected at all times. So if someone's removed a, a routing entry or a firewall rule or some kind of configuration change that breaks an application, the owner will know immediately. Not only he knows, he can also submit a ticket to repair that. So, so mean time to resolution is much uh, uh, you know, shorter. Cool. So organizations are just seem to be jumping on the cloud and pushing stuff out there. And of course they did it without security, but now they're thinking maybe we need firewalls uh, in the cloud. How are you helping them uh, establish control and, and, and move those policies from you know, the on-premise to the cloud? Okay, so um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a big trend definitely. The cloud and virtualization, which we kind of look at as very similar to each other, because uh, it could be, cloud could be on-premise, like internal cloud or public cloud, so. Um, we are not yet seeing the larger um, financial organizations, for example, roll out significant cloud infrastructure. They are doing some virtual stuff, um, and, and some of the, the larger, the leading virtual uh, vendors have started to provide virtual networks uh, last year, and now virtual security, virtual firewalls. Mm -hmm. However, that's, uh, it's, it's very initial, so we're not seeing the, you know, the larger enterprises do that yet. They're starting to think about it, and we're starting to think with them how that would be, uh, you know, incorporated into our um, infrastructure. At the end of the day, what we're going to see is um, Tufin sitting on top of multiple technologies. So today we have multi-vendor challenge mm -hmm. that we provide a really nice solution for by supporting the different firewall vendors. But that's going to expand into a, an even larger multi-vendor uh, problem, which is uh, virtualization by multiple vendors, cloud by multiple vendors, uh, security by multiple vendors, et cetera. And we're like um, thinking how we can sit on top of all of that and kind of create an abstraction that for automation. Reuven, how do customers you know, make the decision to go with Tufin versus you know some of the other options that they have? I think a lot of times uh, you know customers hear of us. Um, you know, in our market, we're pretty well known, um, and you know, obviously, analyze us against the competitors sometimes. Uh, Sometimes they're convinced that you know they should go with us, and sometimes they have a bake off. Um, so um, you know, I urge anybody that's looking at Tufin to also look at the competition. We're yeah. happy to do that, and um, you know we're we're, we're doing well. Um, I think also if you look at security policy orchestration and you know network change automation, the 
the new things that we're doing or have been doing for the last year and a half, we're definitely you know leading that charge. Uh, we're ahead of the game in uh, in, uh, in that space. Um, so um, customers that are interested in automating network changes and uh, maintaining um, you know security, but at the same time also implementing changes faster. Um, you know, I think Tufin is the, the leading uh, vendor in that space, and uh, um, it shows in terms of you know the traction that we're seeing. Is there something that you you can usually account for the wins, uh, you know, particular feature sets or capabilities? Um, so anything that has to do with change automation, um, clearly that's uh, you know a, a strength of Tufin, mm -hmm. uh, and in general, I think if you look at scale and the robustness of the solution. Uh, we have some customers who are literally thousands of uh, uh, devices, so we have some of the, the world's biggest networks managed by Tufin. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you really get to a very large scale, uh, that's uh, another strength. If you need real-time information, <coughs> uh, you know, not something that uh, you might need to wait an hour for. You know, with, if you're using a solution like Tufin, you can't wait an hour. Within an hour, there might be ten different changes that occur, and then you can't assign accountability correctly. Uh, so real-time change monitoring and analysis and, uh, you know, large scale is where we really excel. One of the more complicated scenarios is at an MSSP who's taken on firewall management and quite often they'll build some manual tools. Uh, are you finding MSSPs looking towards your solutions? Yes, they, you know, we have some of the world's biggest MSSPs as customers already. Uh, one of the things that's interesting is that uh, we're seeing a, a shift with MSSPs while uh, maybe two or three years ago, MSSPs that were buying our solution were using the GUI. Mm -hmm. um, they want to use APIs more and more because they want to integrate us into their portal or into various systems. They don't want to open the GUI almost at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we've come up with in the last uh, 12 months is a set of very interesting APIs that expose a lot of the information that's in our database. So uh, you can do almost anything that you can do in the GUI, you can now do through APIs. And that's very compelling for MSSPs um, that need to integrate it into various systems. Um, you know, they don't necessarily want to expose us to their customers, and they don't even want to expose us to their engineers because they already have a platform that they're working with to manage firewalls. Uh, so uh, it's pretty flexible, and we're seeing a lot of uh, interest in that as well. Give us a feel for the strengths, relative strengths, uh, Europe, North America, Asia, for market demand. So uh, I would say U.S. versus the rest of the world is about half and half. Okay. Uh, we're seeing uh, you know strength across all territories. Um, so it's you know uh, I'm not seeing uh, very big changes between the territories, and um, you know we've got good coverage worldwide. Ruben, what's next technologically? Uh, there's a lot of stuff happening, so I, I can't talk about everything. But uh, some of the things that we announced uh, during RSA are going to be um, continuing throughout the year. There's a new uh, concept of a unified security policy, which I think is very interesting, especially in this context of uh, the RSA show. Um, the idea is basically to have one central place where you manage all aspects of network security, and not only in terms of um, uh, reporting, but also in terms of automated uh, change processes. So when uh, a person is designing his application, for example, or uh, network connectivity access requests, uh, we can automatically suggest or uh, propose a design which is secure. So rather than finding out later, um, at the, you know, like DevOps, like we discussed, so mm -hmm. at the end of the process that your initial design is wrong because it doesn't fit the security requirements, you can start off by a secure design. So I think that's a major improvement. Um, so unified security policy for sure, that's a, a large investment. The, uh, we're continuing our uh, investment in the full automation of the process. Uh, across multiple platforms and, and the additional platforms that you mentioned, virtualization and cloud. Um, other than that, uh, we're also investing in our secure app in the application people, dev people. So we uh, also uh, announced two interesting features at that level. One is the integration with the Puppet Labs, which is a server automation platform. Mm -hmm. um, basically, that will enable uh, system administrators to automatically configure the host-based um, firewalls, the, the IP tables. So um, Puppet Labs is now getting that information from Tufin, and we work together to automate that. Another one in Secure App is the um, uh, application release automation. We've uh, brought that into the network infrastructure domain. 
And what we now do is we allow um, application owners to manage their applications in multiple environments, like dev, staging, production, and be able to deploy between these uh, environments. So that's complementing the um, continuous delivery model that you see at the application uh, layer into the uh, network infrastructure layers. Wow, it's been uh, amazing watching the evolution you know, as uh, Tufin grows with the industry, and of course the industry is growing extremely quickly. Um, what do you see in the next two to three years? Maybe? I think in general, the, you know, the market has is, is opened up. Uh, some of the new things that we're doing are, um, it's just a much bigger market. Uh, it's not just in network security, and it's not just firewall policies. It's uh, networking, um, automation. I think the business benefits of what we do today are much larger than what we've done before. Um, so we, we're getting attention from different stakeholders within organizations. Um, and you know the, the types of things that customers are asking us to do are just um, you know very exciting. So the, the vision that some of the customers have for us is true end-to-end -end automation. You know, just click, um, you know, click a button and have Tufin um, analyze you know, suggest the change. Look at the change. Look at the proposed request. Uh, design the change. Go through risk analysis. Decide if it's risky or not. And if it's not risky, implement the change automatically. Um, all of that without any manual intervention. So uh, it's you know that is kind of the holy grail mm -hmm. of uh, network change automation. And uh, uh, some customers are looking for that, and it's very exciting. So that's kind of you know where we would like to be. Let's say two or three years from now. Great vision. Can't wait to see it come to fruition. Thank you very much, you guys. Thank you. Thank you.